In World of Warcraft, within the city of Veldraken, there resides a rather interesting NPC. It can be found within the Gladiator's Refuge among the many sets of training dummies. Here, players can engage with these dummies to test things like their damage, their healing, or their ability to tank and survive. And it's this particular tanking mob that has a rather intriguing mechanic. You see, when a player engages Boulder Fist, it will attack, and every 10 seconds, use Uber Strike. This ability deals 100% of its attack damage as Shadow, increases damage dealt by 10% for 20 seconds, and causes Boulder Fist to grow slightly larger. Oh, and this ability stacks. This allows players to test just how long they can survive being attacked by an NPC that deals increasing damage. This continues until either the player dies, or runs out of melee range. So the immediate question is, well, how high can these stacks go? So let me introduce my raid team's tank, Andorius. He's pretty geared, and plays a class with a tremendous amount of self-sustain as a blood death knight. And we begin the experiment. The first 50 stacks go by without much concern. It is, however, a whole lot fucking bigger. And I did not realize how quickly this thing grew in size. As we approach 100 stacks, our tank's health bar is starting to move a little bit. But we're not overly concerned, even despite the fact Boulderfist is now dealing nearly 1000% increased damage. And something I noticed from this angle, you can see Boulderfist's target circle grow slightly larger with each uber strike. And then we hit the first big milestone. We see that Uber Strike does in fact stack past 100. If you had asked me where I thought these stacks could have capped, 100 would be one of my answers. But thankfully, that's not the case, so we're gonna keep going. Above 130 stacks, we can see Boulder Fist is really starting to clip through the wall. He is much too large for the room at this point. At about 170 stacks, our tank's health bar is beginning to jump around. I was slightly concerned, but Andorius reassured me the situation was under control. Past 180 stacks, Boulder Fist's target circle is almost the entire size of the room. And at this point, it's pretty much Andorius versus Boulder Fist's legs. Then at 190 stacks, we observe the second major milestone. It seems Boulder Fist has stopped growing. The way I had been tracking this was to watch the target circle every time it uses Uber Strike but at some point around 190 stacks, it stopped moving. The next benchmark then is 200 stacks. And sure enough, we're going to roll right over that number into the 200s. Seeing Boulder Fist clip through the wall as much as it has been, I venture outside to where I would think I should be able to see it, but I can't. It seems this guy was programmed to only load in the Gladiator's Refuge, as its model doesn't render into Veldraken. However, if you look closely, you'll occasionally see the chains attached to its hands phase in and out of existence. At 237 stacks, our tank's health bar hits an all-time low. But he still has his cheat death, so we roll over 240, then 250. At this point, I'm calling my healer friends to try and convince them to tag along and heal the tank to extend the experiment. But then, at 255 stacks, Boulder Fist uses Uber Strike, and the stacks don't go any higher. It just stays at 255. And this repeats itself, or at least as long as we had the patience to test it. Now, the fact the experiment ended with us actually reaching an upper limit was a little disappointing. I was kind of hoping it would go on forever, or at least until our tank died. But that wasn't the case. So the immediate question then is why does it stop at 255? And to answer that, I think there's two possibilities. The first of which, and probably the least likely, is that some Blizzard employee just arbitrarily selected 255. Like, yeah, let's have it stop there, that's a good number. High fives all around. The second, and I think more likely possibility, has to do with the way computers store information. Let me try to explain. But before that, let me also preface this by saying, I am not an expert in this field. I took a lab course in university where I learned to program an assembly, and that's basically it. But one way computers store information, if we zoom all the way in, is with many, many sequences of ones and zeros. These are binary digits. In this case, the by is referring to the fact that there are only two possibilities, a zero or a one. 
Your computer interprets these values as true or false, on or off, one thing or another. Each binary digit is also called a bit. Eight of these bits together forms a byte. You might recognize this term from things like a kilobyte, which is a thousand bytes, a megabyte, which is a million bytes, or a gigabyte, which is a billion bytes. Now, each byte can be represented as a binary number, the sequence of ones and zeros that your computer reads and interprets. You might be looking at this like, how is this a number? It's just a bunch of ones and zeros. Well, here's how it works. This is zero, this is one, this is two, so this is three, right? No, that's four. Three is actually this. Let me explain. Starting from zero, if we want to find the next number in ascending order, so one, start at the rightmost column and add one. This is one. To find two, we do the same thing, except now this column already has one. And since we're working in binary, we can only have zero or one. Things like the numbers 2 and 3 and 4 don't actually exist. So instead, we treat it like we learned how to add back in grade school. If adding 1 to a 9, the 9 becomes a 0 and we carry the 1. Analogously, if we add 1 to 1, the 1 becomes 0 and we carry the 1. Meaning this is 2. Then for 3, we go to the rightmost column and add 1. In this case, it's a 0, so we can add 1 and that's it. But for 4, our two rightmost columns are already 1. So in this case, we carry the 1 twice. And this is 4. And this pattern continues for larger and larger numbers. Another way you can think about it is that each column is a power of 2 added to the total. If there's 1 under it, we add that number. If there isn't, then we don't. So this is 2 to the 7, plus 2 to the 4, plus 2 to the 1. Which is 146. Alright, but Shinding, what is the point of all this? Well, let me propose this. What is the highest number we can make with an 8-bit binary number, or 1 byte? The answer we get by flipping every column to a 1 and returning a total of 255. We cannot go any higher. Doing so would require that we add another column, but we don't have one. And if you recall, this is the same value we found to be the upper limit on Boulderfist's Uber Strike. And this rounds out the second possible explanation. It may have been the case that the information set to determine stacks of Uber Strike was confined to a single byte. This would explain Boulderfist's inability to count past this value. While somewhat disappointing, this is actually a very natural way of storing information that is used widely within the video game industry. In fact, this number restriction often pops up in other games. Call of Duty Zombie Rounds, Super Mario 64 coins, and levels in Pac-Man. It's a convenient and resourceful way to store information. Now, it does come with limitations, but it makes sense using it for things that the player, on average, won't ever interact with. Most people aren't making it to round 255 in Black Ops Zombies nor will they ever acquire 255 coins in Super Mario 64, nor make it to level 255 playing Pac-Man. Similarly, I imagine the developers at Blizzard didn't think the average player would ever reach 255 stacks of Uber Strike, aka 2,550% increased damage. It's unrealistic, or at least it was for most of the expansion, before players attain the power level they now have. Also, it takes a long time. With Uber Strike only being cast once every 10 seconds, it takes, at a minimum, just over 42 minutes to reach this value when starting from zero. On top of that, there are no rewards or incentives for sitting there and smacking Boulder Fist. So it doesn't really matter. But it could. With the War Within right around the corner, assuming there's a new Boulder Fist equivalent, Will its damage buff also cap at 255 stacks? If it's programmed to go beyond that, it could become a source of friendly competition among tank players. How high in stacks can you get? Maybe there could be an achievement for making it past a certain number of stacks. The possibilities are biteless.